Hello and welcome to The Sherlock Show. I'm Olivia Wayne and joining me today are Georgina Blasky, Laura Black and Rebecca Hull. Welcome ladies. Coming up on today's show, we're going to be talking about the electric chemistry between Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Are they? Aren't they? Plus, morning routines and how we feel about UK schools changing the curriculum. Sherlock's beauty editor, Rebecca, and I will be taking you through some of the best affordable beauty buys out there. And later on, backed by popular demand, we'll be sharing our supermarket buys of the week. But first, let's talk about that performance. Uh, we're talking about Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper at the Oscars and their performance of Shallow, which, I mean, that song, doesn't it just make you want to cry and hug your loved ones but anyway the point is the internet's gone off that Gaga and Bradley's wife Irina Sheik unfollowed each other um, following the performance no one really knows if they were following each other before or if it was like a it's conscious vague, act yeah. and like why do we do this mm. ultimately why are we pitching these women against each other and pitting them against each other but what are your thoughts on the whole shenanigan and the whole affair I think okay. it's all a bit of nonsense, to be honest. I mean, it's an intense performance, but they're artists, aren't they? And they're just doing their job. But is that kind of a, like, get-out-of-jail-free <laughs> card? I'm an artist. I can look at you oh, like I, I want to shag you because <laughs> I'm an artist. And if you don't get my art, then, you yeah, know, I don't I know. It. I don't I know. Just, I'm not an artist. I don't know. Like, my husband's in music. I just think it's all if a he, bit of nonsense. I think it's just press creating. Mm. Sorry, I mean, she's bonkers, isn't she? Well, that is... Which one? Gaga. <laughs> Lady Gaga. <laughs> the name yeah, might yeah. be a good Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Lady Gaga. You've never looked at her and thought, you're just kind of, you're just like me, and, oh, no. you know, she is extreme and to the max, and she's passionate, and she's yeah. a creative, mm. and she's an actress, and she's a performer. And they're on stage at the Oscars in yeah. front of she's go the greatest... It performers of their time and possibly quite a few casting directors i mean their next gig could be sitting in the right. audience and also yeah. if you don't go big at the oscars when the hell do you yeah yeah, yeah. as a caveat arena just to keep you feeling okay <laughs> i saw um lady gaga was in vegas or something and bradley happened to be there and she invited him up on stage to perform the song it was not like that at all he was awkward he was like oh, okay, I'll have a little thing, then I'm not, like, over to you, the star. Right. So I really felt he was acting in that too. You yeah. Know? Right. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah, read yeah. that apparently he um, choreographed how it was going to be shot, how they were going to showcase that song at the yeah. Oscars. Yeah. Right. So he was in charge of the direction. Apparently there was this very intense camera work and then it panned out. And that they was all him. Didn't so didn't stop yeah. They were, like, yeah. so the entire cheat. thing. And also just, well, finally, because I'm the only one speaking on this, but... <laughs> They were representing Shallow from the movie, i.e. Yeah. they were playing out the movie version. Yeah. They weren't just... Like, when The Greatest Showman does their bit, mm. they come in costume because they're yeah. reliving the, the show and the movie. So they were being their characters, yeah. I felt. I think it comes down to people just want it to be a thing. Yeah, they yeah. Love yeah. The drama. But his wife, there's... Um, on Twitter, you can see that the, his wife is the first to stand up and yeah. applaud them. And then when Gargoyle gets her award, she's like... They, hu they, they yeah, hug and everything. Yeah. And also, I reckon backstage, they're, all ha they're like the best of friends. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, I think Arena, you're all right, babe. Yeah. You're, you're a beautiful, wonderful you're woman. I, I don't think you've got anything to worry totally. about. Totally. Yeah. Agreed. No. Yeah. We'll put that one to we bed. <laughs> no need to discuss it, internet. We have. Right, UK <laughs> schools are changing the curriculum. A shake-up of the school curriculum in England will see children taught about relationships, mental health, and how to stay safe online. Our thoughts. Actually, Rebecca, let's start with you. You don't have ch a child. I don't, no, I don't have a child. So do you have an opinion on this, therefore? I mean, I think, I personally think it's good. I don't know what people think with children. I'm not sure, but I think that can only be a positive thing. I, I, What's yeah. like mental health? Like, I think, obviously, nowadays, yeah. we are so hyper-aware of kind of the essential need to talk about it and make it kind of a common topic. Yeah. Well, it all starts at school if, if at home the parents aren't doing it. Well, I think that's the thing that is probably tricky where some parents, um, it's that kind of nanny state intervention, isn't it? Where some people go, well, actually, what I choose my child to know about should be my decision as a parent. And I think there is an opt out mm. um, right, option okay. if, um, if they're under 15. But... Um, I think that if pa lots of parents find it really uncomfortable to talk about these things, so it's a really good way for that at least the children can get some exposure mm. 
to the kind of language they need to use if they see something they they're really uncomfortable with because I think also, a lot of children feel very trolling. yeah like, they feel very a, ashamed it's a weird they world it. now it's a weird yeah. world and they're probably much more advanced in it than we are we yeah. don't know like it's their generation they're learning it much quicker than we are and I'm really scared of that I'm really scared of not understanding and it can what be they're vicious. doing it can be really vicious, oh, yeah. really vicious. Like, I mean suicide rate yeah. self harm rate mental health issues I mean. It's a problem. It's a big mm. problem. And actually, I, as you say, I don't think the parents are actually educated or well-versed enough in mm. it no. to know the correct thing. So hopefully the school can help lead that discussion at home as well. Definitely. Exactly. Yeah. And I think also, I think maybe, I'd hope, we're all very present, active parents. Yeah. But some people don't have the time, the resource, to be able to be there all the time after mm. school, etc., mm. dealing with the things that are coming up. So actually... How can it be bad, I think? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. As I long think as they deal with it right and well. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know? Well, and I think that is having that right teacher in the classroom right. with the kind of the giggly kids talking about, you know, sexting, sexting I mean. and sen sending a nudie photo to someone. It's probably not a good idea when you're 14. Yeah. And actually, that's, that's a really tricky conversation to yeah. have. Yeah. So. But, you know, do you remember sex ed? It was awkward then, and that was a condom on a banana. So <laughs> yeah. I, I think, ultimately, it's a discussion that needs to be had. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But it's also way beyond sex education. I think this is life skills. You know, you've got yeah. to get people understanding that actually sleeping with your phone under your pillow is a really bad idea. Yeah. Mm. And that, to me, is is just really basic. That's not also, necessarily sex education. How that's to just... conduct yourself appropriately in a social media way, you know, as in, because it's new. Like, don't send messages. It's forever. It's can yeah, you can't you know? get rid of it. Yeah, like, be aware that if you put yourself out there, it's done, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Would you walk through your school playground with no clothes on? Probably not. Yeah. So maybe they yes. post it online. And if they ask you and tell you to do it, you can say no. no. Yeah. Yeah. I know that's my Oh, it's terrifying. Yeah. It's yeah. really terrifying. <sighs> with that in mind, morning routines, because we spoke about our phone, and according to a survey carried out by Dunelm, over 97 million emails <laughs> are, uh, are sent before even getting out of bed in the morning. What? <laughs> and that's only on a survey of 2,000 working Brits. 97 million emails are sent before you get out of bed in the morning, not by one person, but generally collectively across the country. That is that's just insane. It's awful. That's yeah. um, 65 million cups of tea are made and 9 million pieces of toast are burnt. Um, one in five Brits no longer have time for breakfast and I mean the, the stats are quite staggering what do you think morning routines it's not like a leisurely good start to the day anymore basically is it we're all under pressure and time poor and stressed yeah, the that idea that you sit around as a family <laughs> and you're like pass the milk yeah. darling I think yes that's obviously that's gone Should everyone's on different schedules the yeah. <laughs> spelling test do <laughs> Like ten, did like, you? That was when I used to do my piano practice. Admittedly, I gave up piano, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, there was time then. I think even the idea of a cup of tea in bed is kind of the dream. Yeah, there's no time for that I in my house. It's literally right. hot out. Things in bed. Hate breakfast in bed. Yeah, I don't like breakfast. Like in bed. it's crumbs. crumbs. It's not comfortable. Yeah. No. Do you know what I mean? No, yeah. Never exactly. Like should I bring you bread? No, yeah. definitely don't well, do I'll that. I'll take a cup of tea in bed. Yeah, yeah I'm part, I was going to say yeah. partial to a tea. As in bed. you send your yeah. emails. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so on average, a working morning, the average Brit spends thirty minutes watching TV. You're so rushed, yet you get thirty minutes of television in. But I assume it's background. You're it's not sitting surely there. Surely background. Well, yeah. Catching up I on the headlines. Breakfast TV yeah. and news and things. I mean, yeah. I literally give myself 30 minutes to get showered. Yeah, get, get, get out. out. Yeah. 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 yeah, I agree. Exercising, I mean, obviously this is on average 14 minutes. Because if it was a person doing 40 <laughs> minutes, it's not really worth it. <laughs> um, oversleeping, 14 minutes. Okay. Um, walking the dog, 12 minutes. Poor, Poor dog. Poor That's not enough an exercise. Playing video games, 11 minutes. These are grown adults, or is this accounting for children? I mean... Who plays video games in the morning? No, I'm so rushed, that's I got can't to eat. Children. Huh? That's got to be I don't know, I don't know. Um, eating breakfast, seven minutes. That's not good. And posting on social media before you've even got out of bed, six minutes. Unless that is your career... What are you posting? Also, what are you yeah. in the day? Yeah. Can't get up. So tired. Wish yeah. I could sleep. Get a get up. Just yeah, do it. Just do it. No, yeah. one, no one's looking. Like, get, yeah. up, get off. <laughs> yeah, actually, interesting. It's not looking at social media because I bet that would be... Yeah, yeah that, that would maybe be Maybe they didn't ask that question. <laughs> All right, well, so I don't know what we've learned from that other than, oh, times are bleak. Scandy countries. Bet they don't have any of that. Right, where would you live if you didn't live in London, in the UK, though? 
Um, it's based on the number of gyms, fitness centers, green spaces, bars, vegan restaurants, and even the number of psycholo psychologists there are to show which cities are overall best to live in for a most healthy lifestyle. What do you think, or which places featured on this list do you think? This, I've seen the list. My geography is yeah. so bad, I literally can't name it anyone. It really yeah. surprised me. Yeah, me yeah. too. Really so should surprised. I just tell you, because yeah. it's not that exciting a reveal. <laughs> okay, so number one on the list was Portsmouth. 71 out of 100 it scored as the best place to live. I That's get that because it's by the sea. Right, mm. exactly. And the sea is... But I'm struggling to sort of understand. Uh, Brighton's not on there. Yeah, Brighton. Brighton yeah, that's Cambridge. some really obvious one. And yeah. I, I really Bath? think Brighton would be on there. Bath. Yeah. It's Bath by the sea. No. no, but it's a beautiful city. Oh, right, okay. With lots of green space. <laughs> I mean, I do want to live by the sea, but I want so to live in I. Malibu. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry, Portsmouth. Um, no, Norwich. Well, again, near the sea. Really? Delia. Yeah. All I know about Norwich is Delia and the Canaries football team. Nottingham, Oxford did come up. Fourth on the list. 50, yeah. scored 50 out of 100. I would have thought 50, um, Oxford would have scored much higher. I, so I nice. would have thought that would have been yeah. number two at least. Because yeah. it's so, it just seems so plush and so green. Rural, and rural, yeah. yeah. so rural and horses and like... And then out to the Cotswolds and still, what, only and your about 40 minutes from to London. Your door. Yeah. <laughs> Manchester? Huh? Sorry, Manchester, 48, but I guess they have the spas and the vegan restaurants. Or, and London got 47 out of 100. But for a healthy lifestyle, yeah. I guess they've got loads of gyms and fitness classes and meditation yeah. centres and things. So Anyway, Plymouth only got 43. Sorry, Plymouth. Right, after the break, Becky and I will be back with an affordable beauty haul with prices starting at just £2.47. You'd be mad to miss it. Hey Lisa, how are you doing? Oh, Happy New Year, is it too late? It's not too late. <laughs> Happy New Year. So, what's going on? So I'm here to tell you my five favourite products at the moment. Number one, the Chanel Balm. I had to say in French, Balm Essential. This one's nearly empty. It genuinely is a product that I use every single day. Eight quid. Look how many you're getting. Three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Fifteen. Five long. Cushion lip tint. Look at the tip. It's so long. And it's nice just to wear every day. So that's it. Five favourites of the week. You're going to H&M. You sound delighted. Yeah, I am. Why is it so important that we go to H&M right now? Because what's arrived isn't good enough. Clearly everything's so last minute. It's not fault. The show's tomorrow morning. It's 26. I've got a child with an ear infection. I've got another child that's not very well. I don't feel amazing. And I'm going shopping. These are the best vintage fit. Well, that's nice. I think that's cool. So five, please. Look at those. How cool. Get them. I think I might. I literally love those. Could you not put those in the hall as well? Could do, could do. Job done, Rich. All ready for tomorrow's haul? We are now. Well, what are we doing today? We're shooting some of my Fashion Week outfits. Some of my London Fashion Week outfits. What, what are you wearing today? Mew Mew jacket, Wolford turtleneck, Chanel bag. And when it comes to style, I just really like to wear things that make me feel good. So I kind of start always with myself. What are you thinking, guys? So, so cool. I love it. Now, I think it's safe to say that we are all huge beauty fans here at Sheer Luck. So it wouldn't do any harm for any of us to find kind of the more budget items or the things you can be a bit thrifty with, but are good quality and great products. So well done. Uh, Rebecca, because you have found the kind of beauty arsenal to stock our makeup bags that we're not going to spend a fortune on. So let's see what you found. You are our fountain of knowledge, so <laughs> let's dive in to your well. So basically nothing here is over £20, which wow. is nice. That's so, remarkable. And it is payday, which is nice. So if you want to spend some money on oh, affordably. Yes, it's the end of the month, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? So tonight. we can start with the Glossier. Please, let's, can I have um, a look? Which Love. everybody absolutely loves, Glossier. And they have just launched their new oil cleanser, which is kind of a hybrid between, well, an oil cleanser and a micellar water. Okay. And it removes even can the most I, stubborn makeup, waterproof makeup. It's really, really nice. So it's got the jelly in it with it. It's got the jelly in it with it. It combines everything. Um, and it's got vitamin B5 as well to soothe your skin. Lovely. So it's really nice from them. I, I mean, I love Glossier anyway, if you're a fan. You wipe it though, you obviously don't you wash wipe it. it. Right. I mean, it kind of acts more like a makeup remover, in, in my opinion. You might still want to use a cleanser. Okay. But it's got enough in it. Okay, to great. Get rid of everything. Um, okay, then, ooh, hyaluronic acid is like, obviously, the beauty product essential. This is cheap. This is really cheap. So this is from the brand The Inky List, which if you haven't heard of before, haven't. get acquainted with it because they have launched an amazing range that's really stripped back to basics. So everything in it is just one key ingredient. And in right. this case, 
hyaluronic acid, and this contains three different molecule levels, which, which is, is, good. is that amazing. Good? So basically, they've got high, medium, and low, which oh. in short means it gets to all the levels of your skin. I quick swear by fast. hyaluronic now. It's Since amazing. Astrid banged on about it, yeah, I've got into she's it. She's a huge fan. So <gasps> this is... And it feels really Oh, nice. it feels lovely. And it's 4 99 and, and I promise you, it is, you will notice a difference in your skin within about two weeks. It's amazing. And it says use a pea-sized amount, so that will last that'll you. That will last you, Okay, yeah, amazing. Okay, the Flash Patch Illuminating Eye Gels from Patchology. Talk you, us through So it. I love an eye patch. I think some people think they're a bit pointless, but I really like them. And this brand specifically has noticed, it's the one that I've noticed the biggest difference with. It's got, um, I think it's got green tea and also vitamin C. Okay. So you do get a brightening effect, even though it's kind of... It's Is instant. it temporary? It's yeah. It's temporary. You're okay. not going to see it for weeks on end, yeah. but it's nice. It, especially if you're tired and you're feeling a bit drained, it just gives you a pick-me-up, like okay. an instant pick-me-up. Uh, and you get 14 pounds, but you get quite a few in here, do you? Yeah, and five, all right. Five, and they have other really amazing sheet masks that are worth investigating. I mean, like I said, it's temporary fix, but it's really nice. Okay. And they feel cooling. <laughs> oh, I have tired eyes, so definitely give those a go. All right, on to... The Body Shop. I mean, I just love The Body Shop anyway. They always deliver reliable formulas at thrifty price tags. And these are no exception. It's their new Shea Butter ones. Oh, yeah, I've heard about that, actually. So nice. And they just make your hair feel really soft and nourished. And they smell amazing. And it... You feel good when you use Body Shop because you yeah. know they are just looking after the planet at the same Cruelty time. Cruelty-free. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They're just brilliant. It's a brilliant staple. Okay. Um, on to... Ooh! Flower Beauty. Oh, right, let's talk about this because Flower Beauty is made by Drew Barrymore, it no less. It is made by Drew Barrymore. And yeah, it's a big range that she's launched into Superdrug. Um, Superdrug and right. this was recommended to me by a makeup artist, Caroline Barnes, who said, if you want contour, it's your easy guide, basically. And I must admit, the textures are very lightweight, they're very sheer, and they're buildable, so you're not going to look like you've got stripes all over your face. It's okay. really subtle, I think. You know, that's the idea of I'm, the palette. Uh, there's so much here that I can't even find the cost, but I assume, given that it's super drug, it's very it's, affordable. It's affordable. Really I think it's about 14, around the £14 okay, mark. Okay, so, but for a yeah, palette, that's for remarkable. A palette. And again, it's creamy texture, so it's going to last you. It's going to go the distance. Okay. <laughs> On to? On to Elf Matte Lipstick Liquids. Now, if you want a liquid lipstick, Elf do amazing counterparts to their expensive counterparts. I don't know why I've lost my sentence. Counterparts. But they're a lot really, of counterparts. Lot of counterparts. Right, okay. But they're really nice sheer textures again and they last for hours. Okay. I mean you could get through drying? It. Quite uh, they can be drying but Because aren't all liquid I mean all liquid whatever. lipsticks yeah, okay. are drying, but they're really nice sheer colours and again I don't want to put this on because it won't come off. But it is they're beautiful and they've got lots of different shades. Really nice nudes if you love a nude. I um, do love a nude lip, but yeah. not too intensely like they're not painting too intense. On. No, they're just they're, right. they come across quite sheer still even though they are dubbed as matte. Excellent. Moving on. So next, I think we've got the And Other Stories Cream Highlighter, which is brand new for them. And actually, I don't know if you've tried their makeup before, but And I Other... haven't. Oh, they do the most amazing makeup, amazing fragrances. Really? And check out their fragrances. They are the best. That's really good to um, know. And again, affordable. And I picked this up because at first I was quite alarmed by the colour. Right, it's light. It's, it's proper light. purple. It's this. proper yeah. purple. But again, it's sort of a balmy texture. And when you put it on the yeah, skin, it it's, re it's really luminescent. It's pretty. And again, just a nice subtle twist yeah, point. I'm really into that. Yeah. Also, according, apparently, according to my colouring, purple's good for me. Mm. I don't know why. Well, so anyway, go. that's the one in the bag. And then I have picked these BB London Eye Wonder Colour Sticks. So this is from the brand Blink. Oh yes. Who used to just specialise in brows, but now they have launched these amazing rollable glitter shadows, Ooh. and they're literally just like a foolproof way to get your smoky eye. You literally just crayon it on. Do like you, you have to blend? You, you can blend with your finger, but they're pretty seamless. Oh, wow. Yeah, gorgeous. Wow. So you can literally just roll that over your lids and you've, yeah, you've got a full piece of smoky How much are these? Eye. And they're 19 pounds. Okay, but that's going to last you. But again, they're going to last and I'll there's some the amazing like. shades. Oh, <laughs> Put that oh, really lovely shades. Lovely shades. Um, and in where, a similar, what were you going to say? I was just going to where can you get that if it's not, is it the Blink Brow bars the, only? No, you can get it on their website as well. So it's sold on, online. We'll link it below, obviously. Yeah. Okay. And then in a similar vein, these Lottie London eye foils, which I've spoken about before, but I am obsessed. They're 4 99 and they deliver the best pigment. Oh I know gosh. it looks quite disco, but that again, does it disco, if disco. you're going on a night out, and I've actually been known to wear these day to day, because you can see they're very sheer and pretty. 
And I just think, wearable. I mean, Lottie London is a really nice form What is brand. it? I don't know Lottie London, I'll be honest. They just do sort of fun, quirky makeup. It's when you're looking for something a bit playful and you're not, you know, taking yourself too seriously. I don't know how old you are, Rebecca, but do you ever remember spectacular nail varnish? No. Just me? Spectacular? No, uh, yeah. you know. Do you two remember spectacular? <laughs> So they were like 99p, all the colours and the rainbow type thing. And they were just like the thing you collected, wasn't it? Your spectacular Do you remember that. <laughs> Going to like Top Value or something, like one of those shops. <laughs> moving on. Right, go on. Um, and then moving on to the new L'Oreal concealers. So I'm a big fan of these, actually. Are They're you? I need a new concealer. Go on. Concealers. They've got 25 new shades, which oh, is right, brilliant. Every skin. Which, yeah, it's it, very important. It's very important. Yeah. It's ridiculous to think that we could all fit into like four. To, yeah. It's which which some people still do. So oh, this yeah. is amazing. Oh, God, but actually that's a bit overwhelming. How do you know how to find 25. your colour? Well, I think they're quite... You, when you look, you can get a pretty Let good idea if and you this is swatch. anything near me. That one definitely but this not. one's definitely yeah. not. But the best thing about these is they've got a really big, fluffy brush. So you literally put that on and that is probably all you need to cover sort of one dark circle. I mean, that's not my shade either. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> not sure that's it. Oh, I but, see. So, again... Even if you're spending a little bit more, though it it's very reasonable. Really long yeah. way. And the other really nice thing is the formula is quite wet, so it stays love, on your skin. I you, like that for a. Yeah, so when you want to go back in and blend it. I think this is my colour. There you go. You found it. So when you want to go back in down. and blend, it won't have already dried. So it's it's really nice. It's movable. Okay, that's really good to know. Thanks. <gasps> what is this? And then next what is, is Revolution. <laughs> I mean, I'm a big fan of their makeup because, again, really affordable front makeup. Right. And this is their latest palette, which, yeah, is disco. But there are some wearable shades in there. And I picked it for... Don't break your nail. I mean, if I can open it. They picked it... I picked it for the pigment. I can't actually get that open. I'll try, but I'm not busting my nail over this. No, don't bust your nails. <laughs> but the main thing about it is they have really nice palettes. Really, really nice palettes that you can't open, you but can't. they're really nice to <laughs> look at. Really beautiful shades. I mean, I know these look garish, but I do quite like the red, and there's some subtler shades. Well, I was guffawing when I looked at it initially, but actually, That's all of those you would happily you wear. You would definitely wear. Yeah. yeah, and if you're feeling brave on a kind of yeah. spring night out, you might venture you into might those territories. Dabble. Totally. Exactly. And finally. And finally, the La Roche Posay mascara. So La Roche Posay. La Roche Posay. Right. So they've got an eye makeup range, all created with dermatologists. So it's wow. really good for sort of sensitive eyes. It's amazing. And it actually gives really good inky lashes. So I highly I, recommend. I, my main beauty staple is mascara. Yeah, so. me too. Oh, and it's a nice furry brush. And it's a brush. really nice brush. And I think because it's kind to sensitive skins, you know, some people find mascara is quite irritating. You can wear it all day. And eyes, you know, lots of people get eczema or, eczema. or dry exactly. or blepharitis and things. Yeah. So that's really good so to it's know. it's really good. Yeah. Only £12, so yeah. I'm sure normally... To yeah. find a bespoke kind of mascara for that. Is exactly. Quite pricey. Well, Rebecca, what a haul. That was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Everything, of course, will be linked below. Coming up, me and the Sheer Lux girls will be back with some seriously good supermarket buys and a few little hacks for you too. Hi, I'm Nikki, founder of Barcore. Today I'm gonna to show you a quick Barcore workout you can do in your living room or anywhere. Today we're just gonna use our body weight for resistance. You don't need any props, just a little bit of space in your living room or wherever you might be. And what the key things to remember are is to work as small as you can. I'll say tiny little movements like up an inch, down an inch, and that is to keep you in an isometric contraction where all the blood flow will go to your muscles to create that little movement, but you also feel a burn and a shake. And if you're feeling that, it's exactly what you should be doing and feeling. So try and stay in it. And if something doesn't feel right, come out of it, reset and jump, jump back in. So let's get started. Hands on your hips. Hello, from baking shortcuts to the condiment that can transform even the most boring midweek meal, we are back with our supermarket buys and hacks of the week. Georgina, you seem to be the queen of the supermarket hack and the queen of the canap. Canapé, I know, I can read, not really being written. So talk to us, what have you gone for? So, I have gone for this Waitrose 
slow cooked barbecue pork shoulder, which is mm, I'm starving. <laughs> that looks so yeah, good. It's actually really good, and you pop it in the oven, and it takes half an hour, and it's actually just nice as a main course with some other bits or in a wrap or something. But what's really lovely if you want to do. A canapé. Uh, for a dinner party. By the way, we should interject that clearly you have a lot of dinner parties, or your children don't get to eat real food and they only get to eat nibbles. <laughs> all of, all of the above. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what you can do is you can cook this, shred it, and then put it into those little um, baby gem lettuce. Oh yeah. Kind like of boats. boats. Yeah. Yeah, and then put on a little bit of um, hoisin sauce and some finely sliced spring onion. Carb free canapé. That sounds delicious. Yes. That, that sounds like my, like my ideal canap. I like calling them canaps or shanapes if you're having champagne. Sh oh, shanapes. Shanapes. I would call them a canape. So, shanapé, I'm quite sure. Isn't that nice? Shanapé. That sounds really nice. So, maybe this is some shanapé. <laughs> That's how I roll, people. <laughs> right, and what else did you go for? So there's a lot of baking going on in our house at the moment. Seems to be endless bake sales. Oh, really? The, all that. Um, yeah, that time of year. Yeah. So, but I just can't. The sponge, we're fine. We get these lovely light kind of spongy. Well um, done. You nailed it. <laughs> nailed that bit. But uh, icing just can't decide whether we're buttercream, whether we're icing sugar and water, which then results in a lot of mess and lots of lumps. So I just really like this. Shove it in a piping bag. I really want to it open out. it and like dip your finger in so I can see the te texture <laughs> slash eat it. <laughs> um, okay, but that's a good one. It's good because you can either put it on with a spatula if you want to do a big cake or you can pipe it. And it is very good. And it stays in your, I mean, this one doesn't go off until May. So I would just buy it and have it there it's ready to like go. It's a bit like Betty Crocker. Well, I think the Waitrose it's is better. far superior and to the Betty And probably much cheaper. It's only 2 25 yeah, that and looks I like that could do a nice batch I'd, of cake. Yeah. Oh no, it looks really good. Say, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. 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 <laughs> Their cook's ingredients range generally is really good. It's really good. You know? Yeah. And I do like sometimes you go in there and they have the cards with the new yes, recipes, the recipes and then they have every ingredient you need then and there on the shelf. So you don't even have to look for the around the store. It's just so there. So if you're having to make like Eastern nest basket with mini eggs on top. That could How also could help. You this so you feel it. like that's such a like school kind of dessert thing. <laughs> Pinterest <laughs> is what I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on Easter to something recipes. a little more savoury, shall we, Rebecca? What yes. have you got? So I, I mean, mine's, I haven't really made anything special <laughs> with mine, but I always love to get pre-soaked cooked prawns because it's just the easiest win with any meal in a salad like literally anything it just peps up a nice meal pre-soaked was an interesting pre soaked thing. with sorry is that what they call it pre-soaked <laughs> what i call it lemon <laughs> right. garlic and parsley oh nice oh, so ones that have already so got been cooked and marinated and marinated so pre-soaked so <laughs> our food <laughs> We marinate. Oh, marinate. We're so far washing. I mean, <laughs> yeah. On the clearly, other. you need this help. Yeah, I need <laughs> this help. But they are really handy for any to chuck to pasta, salads, anything. And so really those healthy those snack flavored snack rices are really good with that. Oh, you, know, you yes. get that like you are so onion, Asian cuisine. It's mad. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you like anything yeah. like? Yeah, not really. You literally love all oh, things chili and tang. Mm, yeah. 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 No. I think you can, can do I a good canapé with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and a good canapé with it. Yeah, that, yeah. Um, can I... And then just pre-cut vegetables, which makes me sound so lazy. No, but, but it's... speed is key sometimes. You're speed hungry. Is key. Yeah. yeah, and I live in Brighton, and when you get home, you literally just want to cook it, shove it in. You don't want to spend hours cooking. But people, that's not your but... cheapest option. Uh, I don't know. It's not I free, think you can, Rebecca. I think you can pierce oh, yes, it. Yeah, yeah, some you can yeah. No one seems really scared. I'm not, uh, you're Sorry. not saving yourself money here. No, I'm though. not saving You're paying for that. Money. Yeah, yeah, you are paying. But, but sometimes time is and starvation. Yeah, it, it overtakes. Better to eat that than like a box of Pringles because you couldn't be bothered to like prep yeah. your own yeah. veg. Yeah, yeah. And I prefer that to frozen veg. I don't know why. I just feel a bit... I, I know what you mean. I'm worried about frozen veg. frozen veg is so excellent. We'll get on to my tips, but... Because you're freezing all the nutrients then and there, mm. whereas that obviously is travelled and oh. depleting in nutrients. And oh, frozen really? fruit as well is meant to be frozen brilliant. Blueberries, frozen the for best. A smoothie. Oh, yeah, for a smoothie, that. frozen but fruit. Frozen blueberries as a snack is like little bullets of sorbet. Oh, really? They are so delicious, well, but bear, nice bear in mind tip. they stay in your fingers mm. when frozen. Like, obviously, it comes that off. That is a nice and idea, though. I think you said they yeah. stay in your fingers. No, <laughs> so you don't like absorb blueberries <laughs> into the, <laughs> the tip of your finger. Okay. But they stain. Okay. But they are they're like, honestly, you're like, oh, it's sorbet. Oh, little ball of sorbet. Ooh. Delicious. And for kids, if you want to get them like eating ice cream and fruit, 
delicious. Quick win. <laughs> or they're not my kid because he'd be like, oh, dirty, dirty. <laughs> so it's so, a so lose lose for me. Right, anyway. What you got? Let me guess. It's something a bit spicy yeah. or a bit Eastern. Wait, I'm so original. But actually, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it is. But it's actually also not technically supermarket, but you can buy it online. Okay. But this sauce is. Let me look at oh it. Oh my god. I'm, I'm a bit nervous because it has sleep time bit down there. Oh. But it is life changing. So it got given to me. It's from the restaurant Tonkutsu, is that yes. how you said? Um, so. Which I've never been to. Oh, right. But okay. I it's not given, like you ate there. No, okay. I was given this, and it's kind of sesame and chilli. Oh, what have you done to me? Sorry, I know. Oh, no. I'm <laughs> careful that jacket. Um, <laughs> it's kind of sesame and chilli, mm. and kind of sounds normal. Mm. So no, it sounds delicious. Like spring, I put a bit of the oil on like rice noodles, it's but then you oily. dig in with a spoon and get the bits, what hence eat the bits. And Be it's kind of like leaking, and I just don't oh want it on cream too. It smells amazing. But it's oh got, it's kind of sweet and salty and sesame and chilli and just mm. like, oh, so okay. good. I yeah. literally want to eat that it right now. It is so good. You I'm going to order it, which yeah. is really weird, but I'm going to get <laughs> it. So am I. Life-changing, you won't look back. It's so good. Tonkotsu. Tonkotsu. I also just want to go to that restaurant. Yes, Me too. Where is it? Maybe we could do a shit let's review and we could go review. Yeah, definitely. Give it. What else you got? My second are these tikka masala paste pots from Patax. And I'm, I'm always they, curious to see what they look like. Oh, they're just right. little. They're like those... Um, like the pesto ones. Yeah, like the get. pesto ones. Oh, yeah. right, fine. But you can make this curry. So chop up an onion and stir that in. And maybe, so for my children, I do it with chicken. And then loads of coconut milk and ground almonds. And they literally devour it. And then I would do the same for grown-ups, but I would probably put fish in. Mm. So you use so this as the base of your as cooking? As the base, yeah. You don't add it last, you add it right at no, the beginning. No, I would add it at the beginning with the onions. Um, and it's literally so simple and so easy. I'm definitely getting those, because, you know, there's only so many times you can have, like, the same boring chicken. Totally, and you don't want the jars always Well, the jars around. are annoying, because yeah. then you get halfway through and they, yes. they're in the and fridge then they go a bit three months yeah. later. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. these will change your life. Yeah, love that. Okay, my hacks and super highlights, it's not that creative or inventive, I'm sure you all know, but this has, this is a game changer for me, who eats dinner at like 10pm every night because my child never goes to sleep, go to sleep. <laughs> um, it's chopped onions and chopped garlic that you keep in the freezer. Um, this says f frozen, but obviously you don't have to, I guess, but anyway, whatever. You pour a bit, shake a bit out, figure out that's about an onion, whatever, pour a bit out, done. So no faff cutting, no tears, no smelly hands, no you, no like garlic pressing utensil that needs fiddly washing up. <laughs> mm -hmm. And can I'm you put it this. in frozen? Yeah, you use it pan. Yeah. You don't have to defrost it no, first. No, you just literally tuck it in. So yeah, you've got okay. your mince, you've got this, you've got bolognese in literally 15 minutes Ten because minutes. it's done. Or your curry. Or your With curry. That. It's just yeah. so much easier. So and handy. I just wish Waitrose Ocado, if you're watching, you could do an organic version. That would really help me out because I prefer to have organic veg and fruit and stuff. But anyway, whatever. Um, <laughs> Last for ages. It's like a pound, which mm. I know you're like a pound on onions, but actually, I don't know how many onions are in there. I'm sure it would tell you. Um, I haven't read, but that there's probably a quite a, that's a lot. That that's a lot. lot. There's probably about four in there. Right, so for a pound, a you take that. Yeah. It's probably cheaper than buying onions and you've done the work for you. So that's that. And then, this isn't quite the hack, but it's the brand, so we'll stick with it. It's La Española. Now, make this about three times bigger and make it olive oil, not white truffle. <laughs> and now you're on the verge of where I was going, which was the big version of this. Let's just see if they do it too, because if they do, I rate them. No. Okay. Uh, well, the big version and the olive oil comes with a built-in pourer. So it really controls the flow. <laughs> so when you are, you know, I do a lot of roasted veg, roasted asparagus in our house is a daily thing. We all love it. You line up your spears, drizzle on the oil, salt and black pepper, put it under the grill. Oh my God, it's like heaven. Um, and you pour it on and you're not glugging and you're wasting all your oil and it being saturated in like dripping Too much. and yeah. soaked in oil so, you know <laughs> it's like the perfect amount and you and on, on salads when you're drizzling again it's not that like whoosh mm. of oil and it's so economical it lasts forever because you're just not wasting it and the big bottle is not 255 like this says because this is a small bottle but it's probably a fiver which is still yeah, amazing but i think it's probably not the best quality olive oil but okay whatever um i love it i really really love it it's cheap as chips and it helps make you good chips <laughs> it worked better in rehearsal there. Anyway, those are our tips, those are our hacks. 
as always, everything featured in today's show will be linked below. If you enjoyed that, do tune in on Tuesday when special guests Gizzy Erskine and Rose Ferguson, two of the most talked about foodie names of the year, will be joining us in the studio. Plus, blogger Sarah Clark, otherwise known as Little Spree, will be here with a guest fashion haul. In the meantime, please do rate, review, subscribe, and tell your friends. Bye-bye.